Greetings. Um, this is your man, Nicholas Shepard, uh, the Shepard Family Enterprise Business Administration Information System Consultants. And what I've done um, is I constructed some type of ideal. Okay, now this is my own opinion about the mapping Africa, about mapping Africa's natural resources and its relationship to its currency. And the reason why I created this lesson is to give some people, not everyone, but some people, some type of ideal why Africa's economic financial structure it is the way it is and how it became what it is today. And the reason why I'm saying this is because of the fact that I've noticed that the in Nigeria, right, the Nara compared to United States or Europe's currency is so low it's impossible for them to compete with us okay now what I've learned in the past is that and up to this point is that all the resources that we incur into this country um, most of the resources are obtained in Africa and what I want to do is explain to everyone my version of the uh, an uncomplicated example of currency and why it was created okay so in this here you may have questions anything like that or you can research information and get more into it um, but once the video is completed I'll go back into um, the session and find out exactly um, you know do a recap okay all right so um, let's get started Good evening, everyone. Um, again, this is the lesson version of our topic, How to Strengthen Africa in its Economic Base, Lesson 1. And what I'm doing, I have been researching a lot of information pertaining to how Africa's natural resources play a major part in the world's economy, but it doesn't necessarily impact not um, Africa's global economy, okay, or country or continent's economy. Uh, everything in Africa um, is based on how much gain that is um, accumulated in other countries. And then what they do, they push those resources, after they've been modified, back into the country, pushing their economy lower on the economic scale and then putting the country that is actually manipulating the resources in that country at the lower end. It's just like um, planting flowers and then throwing mud on top of them. Um, that's as basically as plain as simple as I can put it. And um, it's, it's basically it's they're really taking advantage of the country and everything like that. But um, what I want to do is go over some things and you can actually tell me what you think. Okay, um, first let's go over the uncomplicated fundamentals of currency and why it was created. Okay, uh, Currency was established to replace the promissory note so that future trade or services could be established. Um, the promissory note was created thousands of years ago in many forms to guarantee that services were fulfilled or would be surrendered once the terms of exchange of service were completed at a specific time or within a selected period of time. Now, what I mean by this is that when they first created currency in modern times, okay, currency was just an off offshoot of a promissory note. And a promissory note was actually not as they described it today, it was basically a list of things that was granted or desired and passed on to a greater authority in hopes that certain favors or acts could be transferred to the person that's actually making this request. All right. So what I mean by this, if I wanted to say, let's say I want to uh, purchase a car. And that's okay, I want to purchase this car. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to work for you over for five years, all right, until I pay this vehicle off. Now, I'm going to work for you 
these many hours a day and these are the terms of me working for you. Now, once that is completed, then the car is paid off. Okay? Now, there may be excess money available after this because there's other terms. You can actually restructure this the way you want to. When you are in control of the promissory note that's delivered to the person that you want to um, receive this service from or this product or whatever it is, but the thing is that they have to agree with it. Okay? They have to agree with it. Um, so, um, what goes on in this, when a person went up to a king during those early times, and they made requests, they brought gifts, and when they brought gifts, they made a request. And when they made a request, it was up to the king's desire to grant that gift, whether or not that king found that the gift that was given to them that was worthy to honor that request. Okay? Now, if that gift was not honored by the king, the king can actually include other requests from the person that's actually trying to um, uh, request this favor from the king or the lord, okay, during that time, all right? And, and it depends on, the reason I'm saying lord and king, because that's basically the Christian's version or the Catholic's version of a high honored person, but in other languages they were something totally different, okay? Um, they weren't called kings, they was called something else, and I'll research that in a later topic, and I will tell you exactly what that was, and then we will, I will start using that terminology, because I'm trying to reflect um, the culture of Africa, okay? The, 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 the uh, uh, atmosphere of Africa, and what they were considered during that time, okay? Because sometimes when you re refer or ref uh, a reference a word that was established by Europe or Europeans, they tend to use that against you, all right? And then from that word, they try to trip you up with other meanings or other situations related to that authority and make you feel as if you don't know what you're talking about. That does not exist, okay? But I want, you, I want us to stay focused, all right? I'm using these terminologies because of the fact that I'm still researching a lot of the words and everything like that and trans-referencing or referencing these words back to his original source, which is us, the Kingdom of Africa, okay? Now, um, in this topic, all right, it's, as I explained, currency was established to replace the promissory note so that future trade for services could be established. Now, currency can be any means to exchange material resources that are either tangible or intangible, all right? To complete any system of ideals for a value cause. This cause must benefit the receiver or giver of what is needed to complete that transaction, okay, which I previously discussed. If I request something from you, you must give me something in return, all right? But in both instances, it has to be favored. It has to be uh, valued by, by me. And something that may not be a value of you or more than the value of the cost of your request, but some type of benefit has to be transferred between both parties. All right? And that is needed to complete that transaction. All right. So, since currency can be in any form, it can be very complicated to transfer it from the person exchanging it to another person so it can be delivered to the end destination. This brings us to the promissory note. The promissory note was a documented note of what was promised to the receiver or giver so that services or favors were honored. These carefully documented lists were written by the highest authority of that nation, country, village, towns, towns representative, to ensure that all agreements were fulfilled. So um, if I'm requesting something from you, and in order to be honored, someone had to be representing my request and be able to hear my request 
and then honor that request and make reference to that request and make it and sell it so once it's sealed okay this is a request and then someone has to go back and follow up and make sure all the terms and stuff like that is is you know in perspective and everything's going um as planned everything like that okay um so and back during these days i don't know how they went about um managing or um doing follow-ups to find out how the project is going um you know stuff like that they may had um okay by this they, they probably judge everything by seasons right at the end of this season or after the moon uh the, the after so many full moons or when the stars stuff like that was in this position and they had names for that as well well all these things came into a major um uh play could became, became a major a major play when they were actually saying, okay, your time is up for this part, okay, where's this? Okay, you have not delivered this, we want this, this, you haven't given us this, or this and that, right? So, um, you know, they, they had to be some type of authority that was present, and then someone to do the follow-ups, okay, to make sure that everything was on track. Okay, again, the promise of notes was after it was signed and sealed by that authority, then verified on future dates or times that have lasted for generations or within an arranged period of time. Now, due to the length of time that may have been honored for, from one generation to another, the promise the note would have been revised to accommodate new leaders or seasons that may have prevented parts of that promise the note from being totally fulfilled. Thus, laws were created to enforce such promissory note obligations so that whenever there were any confusion of what was owed that law would explain would be explained and carry out so during these times okay and I'm talking about in the past ancient times when a promise was made or a request was made and the promissory note was 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 written or documented saying that this person was going to do something and after it was sealed by the, the king or that authority and verified okay okay this date this date this date. So we're going to check on this date this date this date or when the moon reached this uh, the moon reached that or the stars reveal this sign or this and that for the first rainy season second rainy season whatever however they they track time okay uh in that region, okay, or in that continent or that country, that had to be fulfilled. Your request had to be fulfilled. Your your request had to be honored, and whatever you agreed on had to be met, or else everything was reneged. Okay. So now, what I mean by due to the length of time that may have been honored from one generation to another, let's say that you had a child okay and in the process of this you said okay um it's going to take me it may take you a long time and it depends on how much wealth you had all right when i mean but from honor from one generation to another it can be wealth or it can be well my son's going to honor you my son's going to work for you my son's going to do this my son's do this you know what i'm saying and, you know, for three generations or until this are, is completed. And this promise was passed on from gener from child to child to, you know, to honor that request. All right. And what would happen is that if new leaders came into play, they would, you know, either revise that promissory note, right, to accommodate the new leader. Because, see, they might say, well, times have changed. This right here, our economy is right here, the resources are this, this, and that, you know. Whatever the situation was that prevented, you know, that king from honoring that request. Because during that time, once that king died, the request dies. The promissory note dies, okay? is what that was that king said. But as long as that authority, or that new authority, would honor that request, which I'm going to say promissory note, to that authority, it was carried forth to one generation or another. Now, what would happen is that if that king had passed and it went on to the son, okay, or to the next heir of that position, that person that was, that was the heir of that position 
or the representative of that position would have to agree that this would need to be done. They may ask for less, they might say no, they might say, okay, you know what? Your debt is paid. See, it's up to that person, all right? So they had to create laws and the laws were to restrict what the authorities were under the king and what obligated each patron, patriot, okay, of or citizen or, you know, whoever that was at that time, what their obligations were under that authority, okay? And some things during the time was kind of loosely explained because uh, some people did not have the education, did not have the means to honor such requests. So what they wind up doing, they wind up saying, you know what, we're not gonna honor that. You already gave up 100 sheep, you know, um, 200 camels, everything like that, you know, and now this new heir of the throne or the kingdom said that, you know, I'm tired of this stuff, you know, that's, it's too complicated or whatever situation is wasting my time, wasting our time, you know, we need this land, it's like, you know, and they say, okay, we don't do it. So. There had to be some type of law in place for that promise and not to be honored from one generation to another, okay? Um, now, revising currency reflect promise and note enforced laws. Establishing a relationship between the promise and note and currency. Reestablishing currency in association with the promise and note became one of the biggest battles in our world history. This is because the currency had to have some sort of reflection of what is valued most between the grantor and the promising note and the giver of the currency. So what I'm saying is that if I gave you something, it has to have some type of value to you, right? And whatever I gave you, replacing that promissory note, right? It has to have weight in between it. You understand? So, what I was using as currency before, which probably was goats, sheep, or whatever, all right? You know, that has to reflect a promissory note. So, we would say, okay, under this law, these are the promissory notes. These are the laws under the, each promissory note. This promissory note is, is uh, related to cattle. These are goats, these are women, these are children, these are slaves, and this and that, you know. All these things had to be put in place so that when a request was made, they go back and look at these these laws or associated with these promissory notes, and they would be able to determine what was the value of such things, okay? And that promissory note will become the currency a recurrency, all right, of that promise. So the currency of that note, right, is how many times that note will be used over a period of time, all right? So if it's used once, that's one currency, twice, that's two currencies, three times, that's, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And which you have one currency, one dollar bill, five currencies, you know what I'm saying, would be, you know, five dollars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, of that promissory note. Okay, so it's one cycle, all right, you know, and we're going to that later in later sessions as well, okay? So, um, now, the value of these things was very important, okay? And I want you to focus on what I'm saying. The value of these things had to be very important to the person that was granting or that would honor that promissory note, okay? And the giver of the currency, right? And mind you, the promissory note was enforced by the king or the emperor or anything like that. The currency was what was given to the king, right? To promise to that king, this will be done over this period of time. So the currency was you know, I will supply you every year with 100 goats, okay, as one currency. Every year, every time there's a, a cycle, you know, I will give you this, I will give you that, I will give you, that was a currency, okay? That had to take place over a period of time, okay? 
So we understand that. Okay, so reestablishing the currency in association with the primary note needed to be clear to both parties. What will the exchange value be to determine whether the services match the value of the, of the exchange or if the exchange satisfy the value of the new currency? All right. Each nation had established what is a value and what is just a resource that could be exchanged or used for any selective ideals or products of that environment. Okay, so it's like a bushel of hay, right? Well, we know that things in, in certain regions in Africa, there's a cycle, right? So every cycle was denoted one promise, all right? And depending on what was promised under that cycle or that currency, right, was, was considered one note, right? You understand? So they had to break these things down like that, okay? So, and, but it had to be clear. Like I said, it had to be clear before both parties. You know, they had to agree on this. It's okay. Now, you know, you know, this currency of events only can take place during harvest, okay? Well, you know, our goats or our camel or our sheep you know, cattle, whatever, chickens, whatever it is, you know, they knew that from the time of his birth to the time that it was able to have a child and the child, you know, was able to grow into something that would be productive to the receiver was one currency, okay? But then there was a cycle behind that, you understand, you know? And the cycle would be represented in a promissory note, all right, okay? And the currency of that cycle was promised to that authority. All right? So these things had to be written down. And the value of each thing had to be determined. So if you can't give a person 100 goats and 30 of them are sick or lame or, you know, not healthy, you see. So that would decrease the value of that currency, that cycle. All right? Whether the service matched the value of the exchange or if the exchange satisfied the value of the new currency. So if someone was sick, then they'd say, what do you, you know, we want this. All right, so you give us double this during next season. So that was the next currency. You understand? You know, so there was a lot of labor during those days. All right, because there were so many different things that the king or the emperor or the leader of that nation in Africa you know, there were so many different things that was requested over a period of time. Some of these individuals couldn't read or write. Okay, they needed someone to read or write, someone to interpret these different things because you have tribal laws and you have structural laws that these nations had, and each village had their own laws that coincided with the leaders. Okay, some was honored, some some of them weren't. Okay, so. Each nation had to establish what is a value and what is just a resource. And I mean that, okay, just like water, okay. Well, water is a resource, you know, is valued only if you're in a deep desert, right? But if there's, um, if it's plentiful where we live at, drinking water, fresh water, then it's not as, as valued to me, all right? And if I wanted to exchange that to you, of course, it would be a lower cost, right? But the lower cost may cause you to come up with more, right, currency to get that, you see, and I'm gonna, like I explained, the currency is a cycle of things that had to take place, all right, before the promise can be granted, all right? Now, how would it be possible to exchange products or items for services, then replace the promise note with an emblem that would denote the value of a currency or service rendered. One must understand value. One, excuse me. One must understand value is a state of mind established by the culture in which it is representing. Some things have less of value than others, but may be of value to another. Right. So what I'm saying is that if something is value of me. And you could have the same thing, okay? But to me, 
there's no value or it's not an equal value because I don't need it. You know, I have no, I have a lot of it. Okay, so if you give me something I already have, of course it's gonna, it's, you're gonna have to produce more to me, right? In order for me to grant it, you got me, because I have it. So that currency that you were providing to me was substantive. You know, I'm so okay. Well, all right, I got twenty of these. All right, so what else do you got? You see, so the value of that currency had to increase, and it was increased by what you were present, what you were presenting to that authority for whatever need that you had that need that you wanted okay now again one must understand value is a state of mind established by the culture in which it's representing some things have less of value than others but may be of value to others not in association with the cultural kingdom that it represents alright I'm going to say it again one must understand value is a state of mind established by the culture in which it is representing. Some things have lesser value than others, but may be of value to others not in association with the culture or kingdom that it represents. Okay? So, what's going on is, like, okay, use an example is freedom okay of uh, freedom of one culture may be tormented by those associated by another you get it an example is the freedom of one culture could be a torment to those associated with another so my freedom may cause you burden okay and if my freedom or whatever the freedom is, so I can be freedom of walking your property, freedom to, you know, acquire property, and you know, you may not have the authority to really debate it, you know, and um, it, it's torment you because now you got to, you know, you have to give it up, or you have to fight for it, or you know, you have to, you know, get soldiers and everything like that. You see, so the freedom of one culture could be torment to those associated with another. So that's what I mean. All right, so. Early times, you know, early times, um, you know, people from other lands used to come in because they was able to roam throughout the world, which the queen allowed them to do. They was able to go into Africa and claim stuff, right? And claim stuff that wasn't even theirs, man. You see? And to keep the, since they couldn't fight against them, right, it was tormenting them. Because they had to give it up because they didn't just have the they didn't have the, the they didn't have the strength to, to you know to push them back off. You understand? And whatever took place and how long it took place, whatever the end result was, they weren't able to combat it. Now, the resource now the re now the resources that are of abundance in Africa is squandered due to its abundance but is held at high need in other countries due to the lack of that particular resource. So what I'm saying is that, just like I explained before, if I have a lot of something, I just can just be given away, you know, like gold, oil, diamonds, rubies, it's plentiful here, I can get it, it's no problem, you know, I'm flaunting it, and then you're saying like, wow, man, we can't even get a hold of this stuff, man, they just throwing that junk away. Okay, why don't we just try to go in there and just grab as much as we can and then do some else with it and then, you know, resell it. Okay, so this is what I mean. The resources that are of abundance in Africa is squandered due to the, its abundance, but is held high in need in other countries due to the lack of that particular resource. So they don't have it. They needed oil. They didn't know how to get the oil, okay? Over there in Europe, they had to dig within rocks and all this other stuff to get to it, going down, up in the mountains, whatever they were. You know, it was hard to get to the resources there. They didn't have the machinery to do it, okay? And it was very dangerous, man, you know, because of earthquakes and a lot of ships and everything like that. It was very dangerous, landslides and everything like that. But in Africa, they didn't have that problem, okay? They was able to get it 
access it and they had the technology and the ability to dig and set up structures and everything like that to extract these different things and they had enough of it to they can share it was something that was that was in abundance okay now another extent example of the freedom of one culture that could be a torment of those associated with another is the resources that is in abundance within Africa are squandered due to its abundance but a hell and higher need outside of Africa this is due to the lack of those particular resources okay now we want to focus on that those resources that are in abundance within Africa are squandered due to its abundance but are held in a higher need outside of Africa just like oil okay Africa has an unlimited supply of oil because there's so much oil in that country is not held in high regard there because it's accessible to everyone there okay but in another country they don't have as much as oil or it may be more hard more complicated to get it you know through rocks and stone you know if you don't have a machine and you go dig down and get it you know or how the world is actually structurally tilted the oil just not flowing in your direction you see, you know, and depending how the earth is turned, everything like that, all this plays a major part. Okay. Now, another extended example of, of natural resources that are in abundance within Africa and are overused are resources that are abundance within Africa are being overused or misused in countries that are lacking those same needed resources and are modified, then sent back into the country that provided it at a higher cost okay or they provide that country provided at a higher cost right so what they do they take something brush it off bring it back and say wow look what we got and they're looking at it because they never saw it in that form so if you gave them something and they and you take it you change it and you do a flip on it and you take it back and you sell them this item and request more of something that's natural and abundance in that country for it making you know giving you an advantage of the market it puts you in a position of an authority so what you're doing you're, you're going in you're taking resources you're modifying it going back and making it appear right that you are the creator of such things right you have the ability to make it look you know more beautiful or put it in more demand and your culture right or in the culture that you sit bringing it back to and make them feel like hey listen this is what i'm doing and this is what i got you know you can get this you give me this right here so you are able to trick these individuals into believing something that really doesn't exist all right they can do the same dog thing right okay again so in the subject of revising currency reflect promise no enforce laws what can we do as descendants of Africans? Living in these United States of the, of the Americas, okay? Revised currency laws to reflect the resources needed from the continent of Africa, okay? Revise promissory note laws associated with that established currency of Africa that will denote all resources obtained within the continent of Africa will increase the value of their currency in Africa by 1% if resources are retained and modified for public use. So what I'm saying is that if you take a resource in Africa that's in high demand in another country, all right, based on the demand of that country, that increases the, the currency value in the, the originated country, right, which is Africa, by 1%. Okay? And you can do the math on that. So that means that if you charging, if you coming over here and getting it for a dollar, right, and you selling it back in your country for two hundred dollars, right, you have to increase that every. So like we now, I haven't gotten to every gram, all right, because that's how they pretty measure it by gram. Okay, I say one dollar gram. You see, you understand? Each time you come back. You see, I can increase it by 1% every time you go, oh, you're coming back again? But guess what? We're going to increase the value to 
of 1% every time you come back. Or we can put it in lots. You see? You understand? And then increase it. 1% by X amount of ounces or grams or whatever you want to have it. Right? And come on a number and say, okay, this is the value. You understand that? Okay. Now, um, Again, what can we do as descendants of Africans living in the United States of the Americas? Okay, and I said that revised currency laws that mandates a structure which match a one-for-one -one rule. If the resource obtained and used, say, if the resource obtained and used increase by plus or minus 2%. So what I'm saying is that if the value of what you're taking away, right, one for one, one dollar, one dollar, okay, one pennies, one pennies, one penny, one penny, two pennies, two pennies on both ends. If you take it away, right, and you create a system where you need it, all right, the increase in demand by my plus or minus two, two percent, right? So it's saying if you increase your like you come back the second time, it increases. Right? You understand? If you don't come back, you know, it decreases by two percent, but then other factors can come into play behind that. All right? That would keep the 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 African continent's currency matching Europe's or you know, with the market. So they won't be having these, well, I'm going to get to stuff later, okay? And then revise, okay, and also revise primary note laws that mandates a structure to enforce the value of all promissory notes that match the current economy in which the resources are used and in demand outside the continent of Africa, okay? Again, revise primary note laws that mandates a structure to enforce the value of all promising notes that match that current economy in which the resources are used and in the demand and in demand outside the continent of Africa. So if the value goes up in your country, guess what our, guess what happens to the uh, the African uh, value, okay, or Naira or you know their currency. It goes up as well. The cost goes up as well. All right, labor force goes up. Everything goes up. Right, that will keep Africa in a position of authority. See, then they be able to establish the fact that what they're able to do, how they're going to do it, what they expect from it, they become an authority of that product. Okay, um, you can learn more about the difference between a promissory note and currency at. Uh, https uh, forward slash forward slash www dot sapling dot com and that's a reference number difference between bank currency okay now do not let the above reference confuse you okay it is based on a, a lot of double talk and backdoor evaluation and trade offs that are not controlled by the resources that were acquired through manipulation and illegal side take uh, side take takes or side talks right. So these people may be doing deals, backdoor deals, and everything like that, you know, to make things appear to, on the front side to be one way, but the back side is something totally different. All right. So you read it, you got to look at it, you know, because a lot of people that's out there, they are not using the dollar the way it's supposed to be used. All right. They're not, they're just not doing it because. If you look at, and which I'm gonna do in my second lesson, I'm gonna go over currency, okay, with you, and we're gonna look at a one-on-one -on -one basis on currency and how currency, uh, American currency, and what are the resources that's actually backing it, and if it's coming from another country, then the country that's coming from, currency should match it. You know what I'm saying? Their currency, or it should be more. You understand? Plain and simple. All right. So. This is what I want to describe to you. Okay, now, um, let me go back. Okay, so how can we revitalize the natural conception, okay, 
of resource acquired within the continent of Africa and turn it back to, into the original conception of why currents existed. Okay, and these are the things I come up with. Right, first is cost of labor within Africa that is compatible with other world structured countries. Okay, risk of performing that labor within Africa. Costs of transporting material to perform that labor from and within Africa, technology and administrative costs within the continent of Africa, and that communication outside the continent of Africa, governmental environmental protection laws within the continent of Africa. All these things must play a factor in how we push Africa's currency or economic situation up and make it compatible to the rest of the world, okay? Africa should never be a back-end country to the currency. It should never be that way. Since all the resources are coming from there, we should, they, you know, we should be in front of everybody. We should be the authority, okay? You know, I'm like, how in the world can Europe be an authority when all the stuff coming from Africa, man, is ridiculous. You know, it's just straight up ridiculous. There's no way that you can give, you know, I loan you $10, right? And then after I loan you $10, you come back to me and say, okay, the value of the $10 that you loan me is 20 So now you got to give me $20 to get it back, get your $10 back. That's basically what that is. You know, how in the world... And I'm going to loan you ten dollars, right? And you don't pay me. In order for me to get my ten dollars back, I give you twenty dollars. That's basically what's going on in Africa, man. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 you know, they doing side takes and they tricking them to giving them more for something that's already there. Okay, which is ludicrous. All right. Okay, uh, I want you to watch out for our, uh, our next series of how to strengthen Africa and its economic base, lesson two. Um, how can we revitalize the natural conception of resources acquired within the continent of Africa and turn it back into the original conception of why it currently existed? Okay, I would like for you to please like, subscribe, and then share this training video so that others can obtain the true knowledge of why things are the way they are in Africa. Okay, and I'm going to go into the next session. It's going to be an open dialogue that I'm going to talk to you about. So, um, Stick with me a little bit longer. Uh, greetings. Um, hello, everyone. This is uh, this is the second part of the conversation um, pertaining to how to strengthen Africa and its economic base. Um, this is a, a part of uh, lesson number one. And this is, what I'm doing right now is have an open dialogue about um, Nigeria, okay. Um, like I said, I am Nigerian uh, <clears throat> and I'm a descendant of Nigerian um, ancestors. Um, and I did the tests and everything like that, you know, so, uh, you know, I like, you know, so I am Nigerian and then uh, whether or not some of my family members may claim to be or not, um, there's other testings that I'm going to go through in order to find out uh, exactly what tribe um, I belong to or who I am associated with. And then from that point, I take further steps of trying to reunite uh, myself in that uh, endeavor. Okay, but here and there. Um, what I was basically um, concerned about was the fact that I was talking to some people about uh, Nigeria, right? And as we know, Nigeria is a very, um, uh, in Africa, it's one, one of the uh, well-structured place in Africa, the continent of Africa. And I'm not saying it's the most wealthy or anything like that, but I'm speaking on the level of that, um, I have read and discovered that um, there have been a lot of violations uh, against Africa that uh, allow them not to be able to gain access to the wealth that 
is being stripped from their land and then resold back to them at a much cheaper cost. Okay, And what I mean by this is that um, if I gave you ten dollars, right, and when you came back to me, you said that in order for me to get my ten dollars from you, I have to give you twenty. All right, that's basically what's going on in Africa today. They are um, double charging the people there. Um, based on what they have taken out of the soil in that country. Um, as, I seen, I th as I was showing you before, you know, in Africa, um, Africa has a lot of resources. I'm talking like resources that is just amazing um, what actually comes out of Africa. You know, you have crude oil, um, you have natural gas, petroleum, natural gas, iron, coffee, diamonds and it's gold all throughout Africa and um, oil uh, uranium okay you know it's so much so many things coming out of Africa is incredible and these things that the rest of the world is actually um, these things the world is actually profiting from right and Nigeria is not getting anything back in, the, in return as far as economic power and and I believe the reason for this is the fact that um, they don't want to give Africa that power because of the fact that they gave Africa that power, then it would cause an overlap of, of, of structure um, against the other cultures and stuff like that, you know. Uh, as we know, uh, in Africa, and if you, if you have read, it's those of you that have not uh, researched this information, I really recommend that you go and research information pertaining to Europe and what was going on in Europe during that time during the 12th century, 11th century, 10th, 13th, 9th century, etc. up to the point of the 1700s where um, in the 1800s where a big flux of Europeans migrated to the United States not just the United States but abroad uh, the reason why they did this because of that, you know, the resources that was being um, used up in that country and the people had outpopulated the territory in which they lived, so they was looking for other places to live. Not only that, there were wars going on in that country, up to like massive wars going on in Europe during that time. And um, I was looking at some things, and um, you know, concerning that. But anyway, that be involved in other lessons. But my thing is that if Africa has the resources, okay, and you are pulling things out of Africa, and you need these things, and then you go in there, you mine it, and you take it, and you take it back to your country, and you use it. So it's demand of this product in your country, but you're taking it out of a country that has that's plenty. You're not giving them what you're taking. You're not even helping them structure their society so they can benefit from the stuff that you're taking. You're just taking and using it, then go back and charge them all this money for the stuff that you're taking out of the earth, you know. And as far as, you know, um, them, you know, like the Western world, which I'm part of, the Western world, the part of the Western world that actually um, tricked the kings because like you know I'm told like a person that doesn't have the intelligence okay that has been created in other countries to manipulate the system and they their whole concept of belief is trust right and respect and you don't look at them on that level so you able to tell them things a lot of them and then utilize their their method of, of goodwill as a tool to steal from them, not even honoring the things that you did, and then through time and laws, you protect that wealth that you that you taken from that country, and then not only that, you say that their currency is worth nothing. See, but if the currency is worth nothing, how come it's a value in a country that you live, right? That you take it to. See, it does, see, this doesn't make sense to me. How can 
Nigeria Naira be worth like a penny, okay? You know what I'm saying? To our fifteen dollars, you know. Um, and I want to. And what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna look at this on this uh, on this level here. Um, and what it is is that I was looking at Nigeria as well. Let me see, Nigerian. Let me see. Let's see, Nigerian um, Nera. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go here. And okay, so it's saying here one Nigerian Nera is worth 0 0.0026. So that's tw that's less than a penny, man. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So 100 Naira, okay, which is basically a lot of money in that country, you know, based on their standard. Uh, I'm not saying a lot of money, but if you move further away from the city, it's only worth 26 cents, man. You know, I'm trying to comprehend this. I'm saying that if diamond, gold, and oil come from that country, how can their Naira, 100 Naira, be only worth 26 cents? How come a hundred Naira is not worth a hundred American dollars. See, I just can't, you know, I, I can't, I don't understand this. And, you know, and they were saying that, and I was looking at, another site I was looking at was, um, um, it was, let me see, it is what is the hourly work pay rate in Nigeria? So um, I was looking at this, okay, this is the data pay scale in Nigeria, and they were saying, okay, it says project manager, right? I spelled the type, and I don't know how true this is, but I'm just going by what they wrote here in the internet. Um, and I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to try to figure out, okay, so it's, it's 3 million five hundred fifty five. The three million five hundred fifty nine thousand and three hundred and seven naira. Okay, that seems like a lot, right, to them. But if you place it in this conversion chart, right, you know, I'm told like it's it's nine thousand one hundred eighty four dollars and forty six cents. You know what I'm saying? And that's is that a year? That's crazy, man. That's crazy. I'm told like, why? How's that? I'm, I'm looking at how's that possible, right? You know, how's that possible? How's it possible that, you know, they only making nine thousand dollars a year, man, in that country as a, and that's an average project manager. You know what an average project manager makes in, in United States? You know, you double like sixty five thousand dollars or more, man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna look at, you know, I'm talking like sixty-five. So, oh my God. So that's like, that's like two million. Wait, 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 wait. Let me see. That's twenty-five million, one hundred eighty-nine thousand eight hundred fourteen I mean, point ninety four of Nera. You, you understand what I'm talking about? You know. So if I plug this amount right into to the chart to specify how much that will convert into American money, and so you know, I'm talking like it doubles, man. And and it's incredible how they do this, man. I'm saying, do you know how hard they have to work to make that money? You know, and and that's why there's a great imbalance, you know, in Africa because some of the fact that. The, the 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 economic scale is so out balanced, unbalanced there with the rest of the world, and all the resources coming from there. I'm talking like everything you can imagine that we use every day. I'm talking like to make a lot of different items. Every day items we take granted for comes from that continent, and so I'm saying that if you take something from that continent, how come whatever is value in your country, how come it's not increasing the value of that? Product. Okay, give an example. 
if okay I'm gonna go back here and find out I'm gonna find a car right I'm not gonna try to find something that's too expensive or anything like that okay so I'm gonna look at a car and I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say how let me see how much does a 2000 let me see 2020 American car cost in Nigeria. Okay, so so it says, and they don't even really have American cars in there, but you know they can ship a car to Nigeria, but you know, but let's say in Japan, so. Okay, a Camry costs, and I'm and I, you know, and I, I don't even know how much you know. This is three million there, so, and I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna see exactly how much that really is in American dollars. So, so, um, and this is a Japanese car, right? This is um, oh, this is a two, this is a used car, man. It's a 2010 used car, man. Okay. And so it's a year from 2020 to 2019. So I'm going to look at this. Let's see, set. Man, this is crazy. They're not even selling new cars there like that. All this stuff is used, man. But see, the thing is, is that you know, how can you know how how can you charge someone something that is impossible for somebody to own? You know, I'm, like how can you charge someone? something that is impossible for them to own. You understand? And I'm told like if I took if I went to Africa and start digging around the earth and the United States is paying me to do it, do much money they would be paying me to do that, man. You know? I'm told like it won't be cheap, man. Okay? They're not gonna pay me twenty six cents an hour, man, to, to do nothing. All right. And I'm quite sure the American contractors they send over there, man, they not they man, they not paying them Nigerian rate, man. They paying them American rate. Now, the government may subsidize that government with extra credits and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying, so that they can do certain things, but United States company is not sending their people over there, man, making that type of money, man. I'm talking about that, look that little money, man, and not at all. So, and they take the resources, bring it back, refine it, and do what they do to it, and then they send it back to Africa, man, and charge them three times the amount of the what it's supposed to cost, man. And and that's 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 insane. And then I'm not saying that, you know, there are people out there that can't. I'm quite sure that they make some type of deals like that, you know, but they subsidize a lot of different stuff there that um that's that's unreasonable. Is and I don't understand that. Okay. But I will research that in my lesson too and I'll find out more information about that because I can be far fetched. But I'm just looking at the fact that, you know, I'm looking at the NARA Right, and that's what I'm basing my conversation on. I'm looking at the NARA, and I'm looking at now. Okay, I'm gonna show you, or I'm gonna explain to you how much the American dollar is really worth. Okay, so I'm gonna say, what is the true value of the U.S. dollar. Okay. And I know they're talking. I know they're kicking rocks with this. Okay. So, 
they saying on well, this is just a conversation okay and they said that um okay so I, i'm not going to use that because that's that's just a blog like that the balance one of us who says that you just don't Okay, so it was down a value measure three different ways. Okay, they said the exchange rate euro to dollar, 10 year treasury note yield, then they got foreign currency reserve. So they're saying the US dollar value measured three different ways. So they measured by three different continents, man. You know, and like you got the euro. Foreign currency reserves, right? And that's the compilation of all the the top leading, you know, uh, marketers, you know, financial marketers of, of money, of currency, or, or, or notes. And they and then they look at what it yields within a period of time. And this is here's a ten year, you know what I'm saying? So they said that what would that value be within two years? And that's how they come up with the value of the dollar. And this is the, this, I get this uh, here off, uh, it's, uh, uh, the, the website is uh, thebalance.com forward slash value of U.S. dollar. Okay, so, uh, but there's another, there's another thing here. Um, and see, the, and, and what it is that they're giving us a run, they're giving, you know, um, what is the value of the U.S. dollar? So I'm, a, I'm, you know, and they have a lot of different things here, right? So it says, it says one U.S. dollar equal 89 euro. Okay, so they're besting on Europe stuff, right? But it's still not telling us, you know, and it's giving, like, it's a lot of runaround going on here, right? And it's not really telling you out front or really telling you what the U.S. dollar is really worth, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's the value of U.S. dollar, 115 cent, the second highest. And it says personal, you know, I don't know what the heck they're talking about here. You know, um, they, they measure from state to state. So that's inner city, that's intercontinent, you know, rates and stuff. They're not looking at, you know, um, and I, you know, actually, I saw something here, and I'm trying to find it. But they were saying that the U.S. dollar is worth a lot less than what it is. And I'm trying. Do I have it on my thing here? Because I know I saved it one time. I saved it, and I um, let me see the dollar. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, found. Let's just. I don't know how long it's going to I don't know how long it's going to take me to really pull this back. Because I had, uh, I have, uh, let's see. So I had a, um, a picture, right, of the U.S. dollar rate compared to what was in the past and what was today. And that's what I'm trying to look at fine right now. And um, look at this, look at this, I look at I know I got it here somewhere. I just got to find it. But anyway, um, they were saying that the U.S. dollar is only worth six cents, man. You know, I'm talking like in reality compared to the world, right? You know, what you know, what's true value? Um, okay, here it is, right here. Okay, so. Um, it says like okay, it says U.S. dollar okay, and it was invented okay. Uh, Federal Reserve is created right in 1913. 
okay so it started decreasing and it has this chart where from 1913 to 19 to 2013 right how the rate of the dollars decreased right so um, in 1913 okay when the Federal Reserve create was created uh, US dollars worth a dollar right and in 1933, it was worth 80 cents, right? And then it, it went up, and so that you know, and then it went then, um, in 19, between 1933 and 1943, it's a little less, a little above 70 cents, right? And in 1944, the US dollar was worth a little less, it was probably around 57, 55 cents. And then it constantly dropped, right? It dropped from 43 in 1963. It was worth a little more than 33 cents, 30, 33 cents, and it dropped down. By 1976, the U.S. dollar's worth was like less than 20 cents, man. Okay, in, 780, in 1983, um, the U.S. dollar was less, probably like fit, worth 15 cents. And then in 2003, you know, the U.S. dollar was worth like, you know, a little less than 10 cents. In 2013, the U.S. dollar was worth only 5 cents, man. You know what I'm saying? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this so I have it. Because uh, uh, I had it someplace and I don't really know where I had it at. So, um, save this, this. And I'm put it somewhere where I can find it next time. Documents. Science. Words of wisdom. Okay, so I gotta say, so that you know, and this is from 2013. So unless between the 2013 today it, it popped up to worth in the dollar man which I doubt it right um, the United States is on the dollars only worth five cents man okay so the dollar is worth only five the true dollar is worth only five cents and I'm going back to the chart right as far as the um, the narrow right so if okay so I'm gonna look at one Naira, right? It's worth 26 cents, right, in the United States. So, if if <laughs> if one Naira is worth 26 cents, right, then you know five zero point. Okay, that's a ten. Five one, so the United States five cents supposed to be equal to, you know, one, you know, one dollar ninety four scenario, right? You know what I'm saying? So they said less than a penny, man. Five cents is worth, uh, you know, one naira and ninety four. You know, that, you know, and that's incredible, man. You know, so I'm probably, I don't know how they balancing this out and how they coming up with these ideals like that, how they structure. As far as that, but if you're getting all your resources, like if I'm like, okay, I'm using this scenario, okay, and I don't want to use, I'm not, you know. If I had soap powder, let's use soap powder, okay, and anybody need a soap powder, right? But it's only one place I can get it, it's from Africa, you know. So I got to go to Africa and get it, right? Bring it on, back to the United States and sell it, right? So I got to pay all these people to process it, I'm saying like that. So let's say to, to process soap powder costs me. Hundred thousand dollars, right? So I process the soap powder. Okay. So now I say, okay, how many people that I'm gonna sell the soap powder to? So let's say that I'm selling these the soap powder to um, to equivalent re uh, a revenue to a point that every person have to pay five dollars. You know what I'm saying for the soap powder? Okay. You know what I'm saying for me to make my money back, right? So. I'm going to take that cost and send it back to Africa and say, okay, well, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to charge you $5 for soap opera. What I'm going to do, since we got it from there, we're going to do a balance. So we're going to charge you, 
you know, X amount of dollars, right? And it's going to be watered down, right? Don't think they're going to give them 100% to stuff that we, you know, because all the stuff going on in our country. They're going to water it down. Now, once they do that, then they sell it back to them, right? But still, everyone cannot afford it. You understand? It's not like in the United States where everybody can afford it because the, you know, the government has has created a system of revenue for us that we can go out there at a dollar store and buy stuff. You understand? And they can do it. Everybody can do that. And so, you know, so the population is struggling out there. And I just don't understand how you can get something from a country's, you know, resource, natural material from a country's resources or uh, resources in that, in their, on their continent. And you refine it to however you do it scientifically, whatever you do, and then you make it as something that benefits your people. And then you take it back and sell it to them for more money, man. You know, I don't see it. I don't understand that. Okay, so um, I'm going to research this a little bit more, and I'm going to, um, in my lesson, probably two or three, so that you know. But that's just something I have, okay? And um, if you have any questions, anything like that, uh, why don't you go ahead and, you know, like my video, um, you know, subscribe to my channel, and then share my video. And, you know, that would help me to be able to create more videos like this, okay? And if you have any questions, anything like that, you know, put it in the comments, all right? And then I'll try to research information. I will research information and talk to you. And I have other videos, too, as well. One of the videos is how to um, create a business mindset. Um, you can also look at that, that section, too, that has a lot of different things, a lot of different topics as well. This video here is going to be held in a state of awareness. Um... Uh, um, a category so if you have any questions subscribe to this channel and so that when I make future videos um, you will be alerted okay thank you very much